and thanks for joining us. This is the signature 30 minutes. I am Dami Lola Abudu. In the headlines, Iwo government threatens to arrest teachers protesting over unpaid salary. Troops bust kidnap syndicate, kill bandits in Zamfara. Aisha Bwari returns to Nigeria after six months sojourn in Dubai. And now the details. The Imo State Governor Op Huzodima, who spoke through the Commissioner for Information, Declan Emelumba, has threatened to arrest any protesting teacher, worker, or pensioner in the state, insisting that his government is owing no one, and those protesting were not only ghost workers, but rented protesters by enemies of the government to misinform the public. The protesters normally about numbering over 300 primary and secondary school teachers in the state on thursday took to the streets of awari the state capital to demand to demand for their 12 months on paid salaries they stormed the government house awari with their employment details and placards painting the government in a bad light mrs grace ajailu one of the protesting teachers who spoke to journalists said she, has, she had spent 29 years in service, lamenting that she had not received salary since Hope Uzadema became governor. The special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Femi Adeshino, says criminals do not discriminate when they attack. He therefore urged ni all Nigerians to come together, fight and defend the insurgency, and other crimes instead of inciting more troubles. In his weekly write-up this Friday, Femi Adeshino said the fight against insurgency, banditry, terrorism and other forms of criminality in the country must be everybody's business. Adeshino said the insurgents do not target a particular category of persons but rather attack whoever they see whenever they strike in a targeted community and further explained that terrorists are only interested in wrecking havoc, not minding who is affected, whether APC or PDP. Some Christian missionary home schools in Kwara State on Friday defied the order by the Kwara State Governor Abdurrahman Abdurrazak to open following their first closure over the state government's order to impose wearing of the Muslim hijab in the schools. Then schools were given the order to reopen, but their church owners refused to do so. At the Cher Cherubim and Seraphim school, Christian faithful blocked the entrance to the school, singing and dancing to Christian religious songs and preventing staff and students from gaining access to the school premises. Gun welding security operatives forc forcefully opened the gates. The Kwara state government had on Thursday directed principals, teachers and the staff of the schools to reopen and explain that the resumption became necessary in order to prepare the final year students for their external examinations and warned that any staff that failed to report to duty will face the full wrath of the law as governments will not condone any act of insubordination. Although the matter of the wearing of a job is still in court, the government went ahead a few weeks ago to order that hijab should be allowed in all schools in the state. The Christian Association of Nigeria has gone to court to challenge the legality or the wise of the Companies and Allied Matters Act, Kama 2020. The can says it is not comfortable with some of the provisions of the act. The association resolved to go to court after attempts to convince the federal government why it should not intervene or interfere with the management of the church in the country through any of its agencies failed. Signature TV correspondent Nasiru Usman went to the street of Abuja to get residents' reaction on if the government should be allowed to control religious activities. the government should 
interfere in the activities of churches okay. because church is not a governmental agency number one church is a, is a spiritual house a prayer house they don't even earn revenue to say they are not there for revenue for money making therefore why should government come in to check their activities whatever is coming to the church is about the spread of the gospel of Christ, the propagation of the gospel of Christ, not for any other purpose for government to come in. Based on the religious law that was signed sometimes last year, I feel it is actually, um, it is not a good one for the federal government actually, because I think it's a religious organization. It wasn't established by the government. We have so many religious institutions that were being established on their own with their personal funds, with their personal money. So whatever um, funds they get from it, the tithes, the offerings, whichever thing they want to do with it should be their business and not out of the federal government. Religion today should not uh, be in political uh, uh, areas. The religion are expected to go through spiritual, uh, 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 this, uh, spiritual way of uniting the people. What is the interest of President Osai you want to start uh, engaging or regulating the uh, 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 conduct, con conduct of a church service? It doesn't, it doesn't concern anybody. Religion, this religion is what is saving Nigeria till today. The attack on government girls' secondary school, Jangebe, in Talata, Mafarawa local government area of Zamfara State has begun to take its toll on education in the state. As some of the abducted students have said they would not return to school. Over 270 school girls were abducted by gunmen suspected to be bandits from the school in February 2021. They were, however, released a few days after. On Friday, some of the students vowed never to return to school again. One of the released students said, although she hoped to be a medical doctor or a nurse, she was no longer returning to school. While another girl, however, said she would seek transfer to another school in Gusau, to continue her education. Former Governor of Anabra State, Peter Obi, has condemned the approval of $1.5 billion by the federal government on Wednesday for the renovation of the Port Harcourt refinery. It was reported that the Federal Executive Council approved the plan by the Ministry of Petroleum Resources to rehabilitate the Port Harcourt refinery with $1.5 billion. Obi stated that approving such an amount for refinery repairs in the light of Nigerians' economic situation is a huge waste and went ahead to accuse the leaders of worsening the country's situation by their financial rascality. In a statement signed by the Director, Army Public Relations, Brigadier General Mohamed Yerima, Sector 3 Operation Adarin Daji of the Nigerian Army have neutralized costs of bandits when they stormed Kabasa village in Magami, local government area of Zamfara on Tuesday. The operation, which was carried out following a tip-off, forestalled a kidnap and plundering operations by the bandits, which were on the way. Unfortunately, one soldier lost his life while three others suffered varying degree of injuries in the shootout with the bandits. President Muhammadu Buhari's wife, Aisha Buhari, is reportedly back in the country after spending six months in Dubai, United Arab Emirates. It was gathered that the first lady had returned to the country after quietly relocating abroad after Anna, one of her daughter's marriage in September 2020 and is currently at the presidential villa in Abuja. There were concerns over her whereabouts during the long absence following reports that she left the country because she felt insecure but the presidency avoid making comments on the issue. The senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Office of the First Lady, Aliu Abdullahi, had in a television interview last December, refused to disclose her whereabouts. Instead, stating that he was not invited to the show to discuss the privacy of the First Lady. Meanwhile, Another is the First Lady Kabiru Dodo in Jalingo, Taraba State Capital. Same December 2020, while presenting some items to widows on behalf of the President's wife, faltered the report that the First Lady left the country based on rising insecurity. 
At least five English Premier League clubs are set to compete in the summer to sign within midfielder Michael Olise, who had been named on the Super Ego standby list for this month's African Cup of Nations qualifiers. Leeds United are monitoring the situation of Olise, but are aware several top flight teams are interested in his signature. Leeds have to set up competition from three of the top six clubs, including Arsenal, Tottenham Hotspur, and Liverpool, to land the 19 year old, while Crystal Palace has, have also credited with an interest. Olise is under contract with Reading until the end of the next season and the Royals are keen to tie him down to a new contract in order to push up his asking price, but the player wants to move on to greener pastures. It is claimed that Olise has an £8 million release clause in his contract with Reading. The Champions League quarter-final draw for the 2020-2021 season held today. Manchester City to face Borussia Dortmund. FC Porto to play Chelsea, while the current champions of the competition, Bayern Munich, will face Paris Saint-Germain and Liverpool to face Real Madrid. The Europa League quarter-final draw also took place today. Granada CF to play Manchester United, Arsenal to play Salvia Prague, Ajax to face AX Roma, while Dynamo Zagreb will face Villarreal. Before we end the news, a recap of our major stories. Imo government threatens to arrest teachers protesting over unpaid salary. Troops bust kidnap syndicate, kill bandits in Zamfara. Nigeria First Lady Aisha Buhari returns to Nigeria after six months sojourn in Dubai. Please do well to stay safe, maintain physical and social distance, and wear your nose mask while going about your daily activities. That's the signature 30 minutes. On behalf of my producer, Anita Eze, I am Damilola Abudu. Thanks for watching.